Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today we're going to take a look at multiplayer mission design in the mission editor here in DCS World. Now this will be a bit of a longer form video as I'm going to take you from uh, step zero all the way through completion of creating a multiplayer mission. Now this is going to be a multiplayer mission in the style that I like to fly with the Wingman Finder guys over on the Wingman Finder subreddit and Discord uh, server. And it will be PvE oriented, but a lot of the principles that we talk about in terms of mission design here in DCS will be applicable to both uh, PvP scenarios as well as making your own single player missions. So I'm going to go through things in as much detail as possible, explain my rationale for different decisions that I make in terms of mission making, as well as uh, just kind of show you guys the ropes so you guys can start making your own uh, missions for yourselves and for your friends as well as uh, for your groups that you fly with. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, go into the mission editor. Got myself a, a nice big glass of water here just because this might be a bit of a long video. Got to keep the vocal cords lubricated for talking all this time. So we're going to go ahead and go to a new mission. Yes. We're going to build a mission on the Persian Gulf here because I like to make all of my missions on the Persian Gulf map. People on the Wingman Finder uh, group, including myself, have paid for the Persian Gulf map, so I want to fly on the Persian Gulf map. I know that Caucasus is very popular for the public servers, but uh, it's good to f also fly on the maps that you paid for, right? And I love the Persian Gulf map. I think it is the best uh, uh, map in DCS world, so that's what we're going to do here. And we're going to make sure we've got our coalitions good to go. We're going to put Air United Arab Emirates over on the blue side. Just make sure that that's good to go. We've got Kuwait, so that's good. I think we're good to go on this side. I almost always, especially on the Persian Gulf map, put USAF aggressors on the red side. Just so that uh, sometimes Iran doesn't have all of the units that I want uh, assigned to it. So if I want, like, say... Uh, uh, ZSU-23-4 uh, Shilkas or something like that, then that, that way I can just use the USF, USAF aggressors and place units like that. So when it comes to making a mission, we can see we're here on the Persian Gulf map, you want to make sure you have a bit of an idea of what you want before you get started. Um, for this mission, we're going to continue my little uh, mini loosely associated campaign, I guess you could say, on a fictional Iranian civil war campaign. I'm kind of basing this off of like, you know, if a Syrian civil war happened to be in Iran, this is what I, I would create the missions around. Um, but because we don't have the Syria map yet, we're, we're doing it in Iran and, and working off of uh, Iranian history and, and politics and things like that. So um, in this mission, this is a late mission in that campaign, the civil war is starting to peter out a bit. So the opposition forces have been uh, largely defeated. There are some, still some pockets of resistance left. And the Western allies and the Arab Gulf states are still supporting those pockets as, as the um, Islamic regime in Tehran comes back and takes over these uh, pockets of resistance. So, um, my idea for this mission is we're going to strike um, some terrorist training camps as well as staging uh, grounds for the IRGC pushing into the formerly rebel-held rebel positions around the Gulf of Horm or Strait of Hormuz here. And that way um, we can hit those before they send in too many uh, bad guys into those formal re formerly rebel-held areas that uh, are going in there to, you know, kill and execute the, the potential rebel uh, factions that are still in those areas. So when it comes to a multiplayer mission, specifically a PvE multiplayer mission, I like to have a couple principles when it comes to making my missions. I don't want it to be too difficult. I don't want because I want players of all different skill levels to feel they can fly with me. Um, so that way 
you know, we get as many jets in the air as we can, because having the most blue force jets in the air is, makes it a lot more fun, as we can get. Um, I like to make my missions be roughly 300 nautical miles round trip, which means roughly about uh, 150 miles one way, nautical miles that is, and we can measure that using the uh, mouse button number three. We can click it and we can drag this uh, line across and uh, and figure out distances with that way as well as different uh, bearings uh, on that line, which is very nice for placing units. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to put those terrorist training camps somewhere in this general area. We want to have it about 150 miles from where uh, our airplanes are going to be spawning from. So I'm thinking somewhere in this area around Lar Air Base. So let's kind of uh, map that out. I think I'm going to have uh, jets taking off from Ras Al Kamaya, uh, Al Min Hod Air Base, as well as a uh, American carrier somewhere out here. So let's see what we can do here from from Ross. We've got uh, this kind of this arc of an area out here from Al Min Hod. It's a little bit farther from Al Min Hod, but uh, that's okay. Uh, you know, around 150 nautical miles one way is works. I can go up to 200 nautical miles, but that tends to get a bit long for people, especially for newer players who may not be as familiar with or comfortable with air-to-air -air refueling. So that is also something to keep in mind. So I'm thinking that, uh, having a little bit of a change of heart here, I'm thinking we're going to do a strike on Lar Air Base with those training camps around the Lar Air Base area in this uh, Lar Valley, I want to say it's called, uh, down in this area here and out into this plain out here uh, between these high mountains. So that'll be pretty cool in uh, my estimation. And that way we can have some IRGC SU-25s on the ramp in here, and that'll be a good target for, um, for uh, coalition aircraft. So first thing we'll do is we'll actually set up our um, our Blue Forces aircraft now that we have an idea of where we want our target to be and what we want our target to be. Um, so uh, first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and place a carrier out here. So we'll go to ships. Uh, we'll go, uh, we'll call it Stennis. Always make sure you're naming your groups. That way when it comes to building triggers and things like that, it makes it much, much easier um, to find the units and groups that you want. That way, you know, you don't have to be searching through lists of names and numbers uh, forever. So obviously country USA, we're gonna go ahead and go for the John C. Stennis. We'll make him excellent and we will place him out here somewhere. So that works. And why don't we go ahead and place some waypoints for him. And we'll bring him a little bit further south near Sir Abu Nair there. That should be good. All right, we'll add a couple waypoints for him as he sails out towards the middle of the Persian Gulf. And it won't take that long, but why don't we go ahead and bring him back to the starting area here. That really doesn't really matter too much because the carrier moves so slow. Um, we'll go into the carrier group here. Uh, why don't we name this carrier CBG, Stennis Carrier Battle Group. Um, and we'll go ahead and go into the advanced options here. And that way we can set up his TACAN station as well as a ILCS in case we want to do that. So let's go ahead and edit. Go channel uh, 74X-ray and we'll go for a call sign of STM for Stennis. If you're flying the FA-18 and you pop in channel 74 x-ray that uh, call sign is the three letters that will show up on the hud underneath your uh, distance indicator for the that particular attack ant station and this is very important too we have to make sure that it is connected to the unit that this ship actually is so why don't we go ahead and set that um, and next we'll go ahead and add another task we'll go to set option uh, perform command activate ICLS so channel why don't we go ahead and just leave it at uh, channel 1 uh, for the I ILCS and we'll make sure we're at the same unit that the Stennis actually is and we will go ahead 
and add a few more ships to the carrier battle group. Um, it's very cool you know, when you're taking off from the Stennis or landing on the, on the Stennis um, to have some like a plane guard destroyer or something of that nature in order, in order to build some atmosphere for pilots as they land on the aircraft carrier and take off from the aircraft carrier. So very easy to do. If you played around the mission editor, it sh this should be very familiar for you. Uh, we'll just add another ship and we'll make sure we change it to a Ty Ticonderoga class cruiser. And we'll go ahead and bring him out here a little bit. We can always use that uh, mouse button number three to judge a distance and a bearing away from uh, certain things like this carrier here. So that should be a, a cool little spot to overfly that uh, that cruiser just a little bit as uh, airplanes are taken off from the Stennis. And we'll go ahead and add another ship here. But instead of a Ticonderoga class cruiser, we'll go ahead and bring in a Oliver Hauser Perry class destroyer. And we can bring him a little bit closer because he's gonna be a, the, like the plane guard de destroyer here. And he's gonna be excellent, of course. And that should be pretty good there. Why don't we go ahead and just for grins, we'll add a fourth ship to this carrier battle group. And we'll add him kind of off in this general area. Why not? Okay, so we'll go ahead and save. Now that we've created some stuff, it's very, very important that you save very periodically and very often when you're making missions in DCS. You could potentially have issues with DCS locking up and crashing on you, or you could have issues with, uh, uh, you know, you accidentally do something and you accidentally overwrite the mission. I've done that a couple times where I've accidentally nuked the whole thing that I've been working on for an hour plus and that just really sucks, especially when you've got guys you know, waiting for your mission to uh, to fly, you know, one afternoon or evening or something like that. So we'll go ahead and save it in my multiplayer server here and we'll rename her. Let's go ahead and do uh, strike on IRGC. Uh, training camps. Why not? We'll make it as descriptive as possible to uh, find it very easily later. Now, um, if you're doing a single player mission, you may want to put uh, aircraft, static aircraft, on the ramp of the ship here. Uh, parked Hornets, uh, E2s, and uh, maybe F14s. But uh, for a multiplayer mission, I recommend against this because it just adds to the confusion, especially with new players who may not be 100% uh, up and up on uh, how to taxi around the carrier deck, and it just is more things for them to run into, more things to cause issues in the mission, things like that. So uh, we'll leave that out, as well as it, it can degrade performance for people who may not have such high-end systems who want to fly in the mission. So we're just going to leave the carrier blank for now, and uh, we'll leave him to be. We'll make sure we save again. I'm going to be saving periodically, like I said. And why don't we go ahead and go into Al Minhad Air Base, and we'll create our first group of, um, of, air, of blue aircraft here. So why don't we go ahead and create a section of Kuwaiti F-18s. So why don't we say Kuwait, Kuwaiti F-18 Strike. Make it very, very easy to find and uh, identify those F-18s. So we'll go ahead and give them a give them to the Kuwait side. We'll come on down to F-18C lot 20s. And very, very important here, we need to make sure they're set to client and not player. If uh, you want other people to be able to see that aircraft in the multiplayer uh, role selection screen, he needs to have his skill set to client. If it's set to player, um, it'll divert to a single player mission, there'll only be one slot, so just uh, keep that in mind. We'll go ahead and go into his loadout here, and we can see we can change the skins and whatnot. I've got a whole bunch of skins and I'm not sure why these guys would be associated with Kuwait, but whatever. Um, let's see, we can zoom in on the tail and see the little emblem. I think I like the Knight Squadron skin better with the eagle on the tail. So why don't we go ahead with that. And we'll give him a task. He's going to be uh, he's gonna be ground attack uh, 
put it in cast because I already have much more loadouts in cast than I have in the actual ground attack. So because Mavericks are a fan favorite of the DCS community right now, we'll go ahead and give him a bunch of Mavericks. And because they're Kuwaiti Hornets, we're going to be as kind of realistic as possible. And we'll give them AIM-9 Mikes rather than AIM-9 Xs and, and AIM-120 Bravos. And that's because the stocks of Kuwaiti weapons are not always as up to date as the latest stocks of US Navy, USAF, US Marine Corps weapons. If these were Marines, I may, I may give them AIM-120 Charlies, but retaining the AIM-9 Mikes just to kind of better uh, match with the faction that they're flying with. So uh, we'll keep it that, and uh, we'll give them four uh, Mavericks. We may change this later as we build up out the target area. We may decide to change up the loadouts and whatnot, and that's totally fine. So we'll go ahead and we will change the type of waypoint to take off from parking hot. Um, I do like to do cold start missions, but uh, for the sake of inclusion of people who may not uh, be as familiar with cold start procedures, I'll just go ahead and make this mission a uh, take off from parking. Uh, hot mission and he's already at uh, number 20 parking spot number 23 here I think that's pretty good and I like it like for pit players to be able to see their wingmen across from each other so I think we'll add the four wingmen uh, for this section to be um, over on 28 27 and 24 so we'll bring two down to 24 uh, and we'll bring Oh, it's already doing it for us. Perfect. So sometimes it does it automatically. Sometimes you have to go in and, and manually change the parking spots for these various aircraft. We're going to go ahead and save just to make sure that it stays with us. And we'll go ahead and add some waypoints for this guy. Now when we go, go to add waypoints, it's very important that we have an idea of where we want the aircraft to fly, how we want them to fly, what they're going to be doing at the various waypoints, and things of that nature so that uh, things don't get, get too confused as you're building the mission out. So like I said before, everything, have a pre-planned idea of what you want. Now, let's see, so Abu Musa Island is a very nice place to do a Marshall stack. So I like in my missions for players to converge together, join up in a big formation, and then fly out to their target areas like a big alpha strike. It's just more fun when you're flying around, you can see all your teammates around you, everyone's flying in formation. It may not be the most realistic thing in the world, but it's just more fun that way. So we're kind of sacrificing maybe a little bit of realism for some fun which is important because we want our people to have fun, right? So let's see, Abu Musa Island, that's a very good uh, physical landmark for our, our pilots to do a Marshall stack on um, because we can see it very easily. It's just an island in the middle of the water. So it's very easy to do a nice, probably a left-hand orbit around that at different altitudes while everyone kind of converges and comes together. And as you can see, the way where I placed my uh, carriers here Almin Hod and my other base at Ras Al Kamaya. They're roughly about 50 nautical miles away from Abu Musa Island. So all the jets can converge together flying a roughly similar distance as they fly out to Abu Musa. So let's go ahead and um, start creating our waypoints for our Kuwaiti strike group. So we'll go ahead and hit add. We'll put a waypoint right on top of Abu Musa Island Airport. And because we have a limitation with the F-14 Tomcat in the number of waypoints we can add via the mission editor and the number of waypoints that can be stored in the uh, navigation system of the F-14, we need to make sure we limit the amount of waypoints we're using. We don't want to be adding, you know, 25 waypoints to the mission. We want to be stick to about eight waypoints to match up well with the Tomcat so that we can, when we make our briefing, we can lay out the navigation uh, very easily and people can understand it as well and not have to, you know, be pushing in new waypoints in the, in the Tomcat for the Rios. We're just trying to make things fun, simple, and uh, entertaining, like I said. So, um, and as realistic as we possibly can. So why don't we go ahead and add a, another waypoint here. We'll add a further waypoint just to the east of Lar Air Base, where our target area is going to be. 
and we'll bring uh, an egress point out here. He'll be flying back to Almin Hod and landing here at Almin Hod. We'll set num waypoint number six there to landing. And we may adjust this later, but this is just kind of giving us a rough outline. So why don't we go ahead and place a F-14 flight just so that we can go ahead and, and get everything ready to go in terms of navigation for an F-14. Then we can come back to our F-18 flight and uh, fix things up. Alrighty, so our first flight of F-14s is just going to be two F-14s based here at Almin Hod Air Base. Now, um, kind of in our in our story for our mission here, these two F-14s are going to be lantern-equipped F-14s that are have two FAC-A qualified aircrew, uh, Ford Air Controller Airborne, which was a massively important mission for the F-14 late in its service life with the big old PTID in the back seat in the Rio seat, uh, get, allowing a very, very nice display of the lantern pod, uh, rivaling the displays in the F-15E, F-18, F-16, anything else that allowed pilots and Rios to really, really see and pick out targets very well. In fact, in the invasion of Iraq in 2003, VF-154 had aircraft stationed ashore attached to F-15E squadrons to be fac A's to provide very precise and uh, good close air support to coalition ground forces. So that's what we're kind of got the kind of idea of that here. So we're going to add our F-14s just to make sure that we've got uh, our navigation stuff set up correctly. So why don't we add our F-14s to 25 and 26 right down here. So let's go ahead and we got USA up here. We're gonna go to CAS, why not? I've already got more uh, loadouts set up for the F-14 for CAS um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the CAS skill than in uh, uh, ground attack. So F-14B, set these guys to client again, uh, like we did earlier. And we're going to go ahead and make this a parking hot. Oh, he already popped in there where we wanted him to, so that works perfectly. We'll go over to our uh, loadout section and why don't we go ahead and give him a loadout of two AIM-9 mics, two fuel tanks, AIM-7M and GBU-16s and uh, those are Mark 82s. Let's go ahead and go for this guy here. So four LGBs, two GBU-10s and two uh, GBU-12s. Uh, GBU That'll be perfect. And we'll give it diamondback skin, why not? That works fine for me. We'll go ahead and close this. And we'll go ahead and change the comm to our common strike frequency of 305. I like to leave it on 305 because the that is the um, default comm frequency for F-18s. And we're going to have more F-18s in the mission than we will F-14s. So we'll change the default comm to 305.000 megahertz for the F-14s. Um, this is important when it comes to if you want your mission to be SRS capable. It's very important that you keep track of uh, comms and uh, create a mission briefing uh, displaying where guys should be talking on what frequencies and channels and whatnot. So uh, we'll go ahead and add in an F, another F-14, our wingman here at uh, 26. So 25 and 26 taken by two American F-14s. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and start adding in some waypoints. Go back to route. Now with the F-14, we do have to be uh, a little bit more careful with our waypoint placement. Things can be a little bit more challenging. So why don't we go ahead and add a waypoint here for our waypoint one. And we'll add an egress waypoint down here for waypoint two. Waypoint 3 will be our lineup back to Al Minhad, and waypoint 4 will be our HB home base waypoint. Whoops, delete. Sometimes if you are accidentally still an ad, you can accidentally add an errant waypoint. All you have to do is hit delete, go back to edit, and rechange this back over to landing to create that HB uh, waypoint for our F-14s. And now that we've got an idea of where our F-14s are going to be going, we can go ahead and start adding 
the special waypoints. So we need to, for the F-14s, we need to go over to navigation target points. We need to add one here for our IP point and we'll call it IP, whoops, IP, so that it matches up with the IP waypoint in the F-14's uh, INS system. We'll go ahead and add waypoint two, ST for surface target, and number three out here with FP for fixed point, which will be our egress point getting away from the target area, and we should be good to go there. Now we can update, now that we've got our F-14 set, which is our most finicky aircraft when it comes to navigation, we can come on back to our uh, F-A-18 flight, and we can add, go ahead and go up to waypoint four, and we can add a new waypoint here off of the western tip of Kesham Island as another just kind of nav point to get guys away from the target area, away from Iran, and feet wet again as they come out off the target. Alrighty, let's go ahead and make sure we save. Saving periodically, like I said before. DCS likes to lock up, likes to crash sometimes. Uh, there's no undo button, so if you screw something up, you can just go ahead and reopen the mission and presto bingo, there you go. Your mistake is undone. Alrighty. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and add another flight of F-18s down here. And to do this, it'd be very easy to add another flight. All we need to do is go to our F F-A-18 flight here, our Kuwaiti strike group. And if we are have the number one jet selected by clicking the number one jet, you can also click through the other jets in the flight, but we'll make sure we have number one selected. We can actually control C and control V, the flight. And now we've got a copy of that same Kuwaiti strike group. But for this one, we're gonna go ahead and bring it down to two aircraft. And why don't we go ahead and call this Australian F-18 strike. So that was a little bit of a bump. There is some uh, renovations going on with the house today. So sorry about that for any background noise. I'm gonna try and keep it to a minimum. So we've got an F-18 strike flight for the Australians here. We've got to obviously change their country over to Australia. We've got some Aussies that fly with the Wingman Finder group, so it's very nice to put in some, uh, some uh, Australian F-18s in there. Why not? Australian number 75 squadron. Works for me. Why not? We can go ahead and uh, leave their loadout just like that for now. And if we need to change that later, we will come back and change that. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave that. Uh, are these guys good to go? Uh, looks like they are perfect. So why don't we go ahead and change on over to our next type of aircraft that we want in the mission. And that is going to be four AV-8B Harriers. So kind of my idea here is these F-14s are TDY to Aminhad Air Base doing some training, uh, with, uh, FAC-A training with Australian, Kuwaiti, Hornets, as well as some Marine Corps AV-8B Harriers. But these Harriers are going to be based up here at Ras al Kamaya. Uh, at a kind of a more austere location where you might find uh, Harriers more often than a giant old uh, air base here in uh, near Dubai. So this is a pretty substantial airport. There are quite a few parking spots as we can see, but uh, it works really well for uh, Harrier flights. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and place our Harrier friends out here. And we'll go ahead and put them, put them here in the main uh, area. Make sure we're at USA, and we'll call them USMC AV-8B Strike. And with the AV-8s, we gotta be careful. We gotta make sure they have enough gas because they really run out of gas quick, and that is incredibly important to make sure they have plenty of gas. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and have them go from parking hot, perfect. And we'll go ahead and go over to the uh, loadout section. 
I really like this VMAT uh, 542 skin with the like the uh, yellow saw blade on the rudder. So we'll go ahead and go with that. People can change the skin if they want in in the mission. And for this uh, flight, we'll go ahead and it looks like I do have a loadout set up. Perfect. We'll go ahead and make sure they have aim nines for self protection because, as we all know, Harriers need all the self protection they can get from uh, enemy uh, aircraft in the area. So uh, we'll go ahead and make sure they have uh, some AIM 9s on there. We're going to give them a lightning targeting pod as well as give them uh, AGM 65E Mavericks. That'll be pretty fun for them. Uh, I really like self lazing or being buddy lays for AGM 65Es as well as they can potentially link up with um, the F 14 FAC As and the F 14s can buddy lays for these Harriers. That'll be pretty cool. And we'll make sure that their default com is 305.000 megahertz, the same default com frequency as our FA-18s, just to make things as easy as possible when it comes to compiling that uh, complicated uh, order of battle in terms of who's got to be talking on what frequencies and channels and whatnot. Okay, so we'll go ahead and bring these guys out to four jets. I think we lined up all four right here. Because they're Harriers, I'm guessing we could probably get them to just take off straight away, uh, either direction. But uh, they may have to back taxi and, and use the turnaround ramps down here. In either case, it'll work, and our Harrier pilots will do their thing. And now we got to do up their routes for waypoints. So we're going to follow and mimic the F-18 routes as much as possible here. So we're going to go ahead and add one. We're going to add waypoint one here at Abu Musa Island. And that way um, they can link up and marshal with all the other flights. Uh, keep in mind, though, that uh, this is not super realistic to have flights, uh, you know, uh, American and Gulf uh, country flights uh, forming up over Abu Musa because Abu Musa is in fact a disputed territory between the UAE and Iran uh, with Emirati citizens being kind of second class citizens on Abu Musa and uh, being kind of shunned by the Iranian majority that lives on the island. So kind of a dispute that came out of the fact that uh, Abu Musa was once part of the uh, Gulf Island colony for um, the UK uh, during their, you know, British Empire reign. So just kind of a cool little history tidbit there. So we'll go ahead and add our waypoint two for our Harrier friends up here. And we will go ahead and add waypoint three, waypoint four, waypoint five for their egress. And difference here will be they're going to be uh, come down for their waypoint six is going to be a lineup for their runway. We'll go ahead and put it here and a landing at waypoint seven at their airbase over here. Alrighty, so we've got our Harriers set up and ready to go. Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at placing aircraft on our carriers over here. Carrier, that is. We don't have multiple. So on our aircraft carrier here, um, it can be a little bit buggy and kind of annoying as to how to deal with aircraft on an aircraft carrier uh, in placing them for multiplayer and or single player missions. So I haven't seen any official documentation from Eagle Dynamics as to how you're supposed to do this in the mission editor, but my rule of thumb is only have eight aircraft assigned to the aircraft carrier at once. Two aircraft per catapult. And the way you stack these guys so that people aren't waiting at a waiting screen, waiting for their spot to be cleared by the guys in front of them, is to have uh, some aircraft be ready on the cats. Uh, do that by choosing them to be uh, on runway for their mission start, and that loads them onto the cats to start off. With the other guys, it will be waiting behind them on um, parking hot or parking cold. Uh, but for this mission, we'll do parking uh, hot. And that way, once our guys are that are on the catapults just zing, take off down there, the guys on the um, on the parking hot can then just taxi to the cats and get ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and put three different flights on our carrier here. We're gonna have a two ship seed, U.S. Navy seed, 
and a two-ship U.S. Navy strike made up of F-18 Hornets, obviously, and a four-ship of F-14B Tomcats in an escort role. So we'll go ahead and set that up. We will have the F-14s take off first because the F-14s carry more gas, a heck of a lot more gas. <laughs> that can't be understated, that's for sure, um, than the F-18s. So that way, the um, Hornets will be able to, to use less gas by taxing to the catapult second because they won't be airborne for quite as long uh, waiting at the Marshall stack. So here we go. We'll go ahead and add our groups. So U.S. Navy F-14B um, F-14B escort forgot what that word was for a second there. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and find our F-14B. There we go. He's going to be escort client, of course. And he's going to be take off from runway. And that way we'll place him right on the catapults to start the mission off. And we'll go ahead and go over to payload. And for our payload here, let's see what we want to do. Um, I'm thinking we're going to give them uh, a total of two AIM-9 mics, three AIM-7Ms, and AIM-54s. I think this, this loadout here should work just fine for us for our purposes. And of course we've got uh, full up gun ammo, we've got full up fuel, we're good to go there. And why don't we give them a different, um, a different squadron skin than our previous TD wide lantern equipped Tomcats. And we'll go ahead and make them uh, VF211 fighting checkmates. I like their skin, so that's what we'll do. And we'll go ahead and add these guys in. We'll make sure two is set to to cat two, three is set to cat three, and four is set to cat four. Now definitely, definitely keep in mind that when F-14s are on the ramp here, um, on the cats ready for takeoff on cats one and two, the wings will overlap with the wings fully extended. So make sure that uh, if you're ever on a carrier in a Tomcat, cat one takes off first, then cat two staggered just behind cat one takes off second. And that's very, very important because if cat two takes off first, uh, you're going to rip your wings off, unfortunately. Uh, very much the same for a uh, cat uh, three and four down here. Obviously, with this one, cat three is going to have to take off first. So we'll go ahead and create our waypoints for our escort flight here. We'll go ahead and add our waypoint one, our waypoint two, and our waypoint three and four for our landing waypoint. Just like that, mimicking what we did with our TDY uh, F-14s, our Lantern F-14s here at Almin Hod. And that way, um, things are good and ready to go. Uh, very much the same as, uh, like I said, we did with the Lantern F-14s. And now we got to go ahead and add in our special F-14 waypoints, just like we did with our Lantern Tomcats. Go ahead and come on over here. We'll add an IP. IP. We'll add a surface target, and we'll ha add a fixed point for our egress point. And we are good to go with those F-14s and their navigation. Very easy to do navigation for our F-14s here um, because they're just escort. We don't have to worry about potentially putting them over the target areas. However, one thing I did forget was I forgot to change their, their default comm frequency. And we'll just scroll through these jets to make sure their default comm frequency is good to go. It is. Perfect. Now it's time to go ahead and add our um, seed and US Navy strike flight. So like I said earlier, I like to limit one carrier to eight aircraft. It makes things much, much simpler. It makes people's uh, time taxiing and taking off 
much better. People can spawn into their jets. So they don't have to sit at a wait screen, things like that. So that's why we're only adding four more Hornets to our carrier here on top of our four uh, F-14s. So we'll go ahead and save this guy just to be sure. Like I said before, we're always saving all the time just so that we don't run into any issues. Now we'll go ahead and go into aircraft groups. We'll add a new aircraft group. We'll go ahead and US Navy strike. Actually, let's go ahead and add the seed flight first. Seed, super, super important in on the modern battlefield. We always need to have, oh, Yep, um, we always need to have seed flights uh, ready to fire harms at uh, potential emitters, whether they're actual SAM emitters, search radars, uh, whatever they may be in the battle space. Um, uh, seed flights should always prioritize higher SAM numbers than lower SAM numbers. Like uh, if, we, if we're flying into the target area and we see a whole bunch of uh, SA6s, SA3s and SA2s, those seed flights should probably fire their harms at those SA6s because those are the higher threat. After those guys are knocked out, if they still have some harms left on board, fire them at the SA3s because that would be our next highest priority threat. After that, fire them at the SA2s. SA2s are, if you see the missile, you get an RWR indication, 99% of DCS world pilots can avoid an SA2. Even very low time DCS pilots can avoid an SA-2 unless they don't see it. So that's why we always got to keep our head on a swivel, keep an eye on our RWR indicator, all that good stuff. So, uh, and I digress, let's get back to our mission creation here. We're going to go ahead and take off from parking hot. And we're going to go ahead and add him to park one. And it is going to put him on top of the uh, cat one here, right on top of our F-14 model right there. It's unfortunately, it's not the best GUI in the world here, but it works in the end. So we won't worry about it too much. We'll set our thing here to seat. We'll come on over and we will go ahead and use this. Uh, load out here. We're in US Navy Hornets, so we've got AIM-9 X-rays and AIM-120 Charlies, as well as we want to make sure they have two harms, AGM-88 Charlies, as well as three bags. Our seed flight, they need to get high, they need to get fast, they're going to be using their burner quite a lot more than our strike hornets so it's very important that they have plenty of gas to get up to those high speeds and high altitudes to be able to fire their harms from the most effective launch windows possible to protect the rest of our flights now for the purposes of fun in our missions i always have our seed flights stick around them and once they get rid of their harms they play wild weasel letting sam shoot at them and flying around them and make sure that the sams come after them with a secondary duty of being kind of a cap, uh, shooting down any enemy aircraft that may intercept us after if they get through our escort or our escort is busy protecting other flights, etc. So um, our seed flights are not relegated to just simply firing their harms and then turning around and heading home because that would be kind of boring, right? So, alrighty, why don't we give these guys a different skin? We will make them VA-97. Uh, no, that's a VA-87. There we go. The War Party. That's my favorite Hornet Squadron. I like. I really like the uh, Native American war bonnet on the tail. I think that's very cool. Okay, so we'll add our loadout set, our skin set. So we'll go ahead and add a second one of these guys, which, ugh, okay, we're running into that issue. Um, let's see what we got to do. We got to go from turning point... Like I said, like this is just, it kind of takes some trial and error. You got to try different things to get it to work. It doesn't wor always work very well. It's it's a bummer, but uh, if you just play with it, eventually you can get all eight jets onto your carrier. Parking hot. Okay, now we've got both of those jets on there. And why don't we go ahead and assign two to CAT2. So that way we've got our seed flight superimposed on top of our Tomcats here. That means in reality that these two guys are probably going to spawn here and here with our strike flight will probably spawn here and here, ideally. Sometimes they spawn back here, rear of the island, but um, I don't have any empirical evidence, empirical evidence of that. Empirical, jeez, what am I saying? All right. We'll go ahead and save that just for grins. 
and we will go ahead if you have these guys superimposed on top of each other just a click and a click will cycle between those two guys so US Navy seed we'll go ahead and add our waypoints in right there on top of Abu Musa nice nice visual waypoint uh, landmark like I said to get into that nice left-hand orbit while all the jets form up just doing the same thing we did before but making sure that our jets are lined up for our carrier here rather than for Almin Hod or Ras Al Kamaya. So um, as you guys know, our carrier is moving. So these waypoints necess won't necessarily be in the right spots because that carrier is moving because this mission will probably take about an hour and a half to two hours to fly depending. And um, as a result of that, our Navy guys here are going to have to definitely input a TACAN for their carrier to be able to find the carrier as quickly as possible. And that's to be expected, but I still put in these waypoints here. We'll go on back in. We'll find our U.S. Navy seed, and we're on Jet 1. They're set to client. We're good to go there. Obviously, 305.000 megahertz for our uh, comm. Control copy. Control V. Okay, perfect. So now we gotta scroll through to. Ah, okay, they're superimposed down here on cats three and four. Okay, so hash, uh, hashtag Jesus. Uh, pound sign zero zero one down here means that it is, it is our copy. So we'll delete this. US Navy F18 strike. Alrighty, and we will go ahead and change up their loadout. Uh, they can be VF 87. Make sure we change their task back to CAS. Uh, no, we're not going to save that, and we're going to change our loadout here. Okay, X-rays and Charlies, perfect. We'll we'll do that loadout. We may change these Maverick loadouts a bit because it's kind of boring for everyone to be toting around Mavericks, right? So. Let's go ahead and set up our target areas, and then we'll go back and change up our um, our targets. Our sorry, our loadouts. Okay, let's double check something here. Okay, U.S. Navy strike. Let's go ahead and change their parking spot for two to four, and then for the one is going to come back down to three. So that way we have these guys superimposed on cats one, two, three, and four. And they won't be quite as uh, uh, bunched up, as well as they won't be uh, spawning in the same spots and people won't be getting into wait menus to spawn into their jets and, and uh, get their cockpit loaded up. Alrighty, so now that we have our flights all put in and our waypoints basically pretty much where we want them to be. We'll probably be changing a little bit as we start building out our target areas and giving different targets to different flights because we don't want everyone bunched up into the exact same airspace. But that's also why we have that FAC A group in there to help to uh, deconflict everyone. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we have our comms uh, good to go and we have different uh, uh, different call signs assigned to different targets different flights I mean so that way we don't uh, have confusion on the radio so for our strike flight we're gonna go ahead and call him we'll call him Colt so why don't we go ahead and add this aviate B strike Colt so that way um, we can uh, be a little bit easier to find things as we create uh, triggers and whatnot later on our FAC A flight. Um, I usually like to call our FAC my FAC A's Dodge. Oh, looks like we didn't name this group, so we'll go ahead and name him. So um, U.S. Navy FAC A. When you write FAC A, um, it's always FAC parentheses A for Forward Air Controller Airborne. Doesn't really matter that much, but just one of those realism things, I suppose. And we go ahead and have uh, write down Dodge. Perfect. So that way we don't have any issues there. 
Uh, the Kuwaiti Strike Flight. I usually call the uh, Kuwaiti Strike Flight uh, in most of my missions forward, so we'll go ahead and keep on going with that modus operandi there. And Kuwaiti F-18 Strike Forward. Uh, for our Aussie friends down here, why don't we go ahead and bring uh, number two up to 32 so that they're facing each other when they spawn. That'll be more fun for them, a better experience that way. And they can blind each other with their landing lights. Alrighty, so we'll go ahead and call our Aussie guys here. Chevy, why not? So these guys are called Chevy. And, okay, Ford, Dodge, Chevy, perfect. As you can see, I'm just saving, saving, saving all the time just because I don't want to have to redo everything uh, because that would suck. Um, so for our escort, I'm going to go ahead and call these guys infield. Um, these list of default call signs here in DCS kind of sort of follow um, Vietnam era sort of semi um, rules for call sign uh, placement uh, whereas air to air flights would be called um, some sort of weapon Enfield Springfield um, where and or Uzi and then uh, strike flights guys dropping bombs ground pounders would be uh, some sort of a uh, car um, call sign so we got that there so we'll go ahead and save that uh, we've got so our F escorts are now Enfield, just like the Enfield rifle. Our seed, we're gonna call these guys Uzi. I usually call my um, seed flight Uzi, uh, and I've just been doing that for a while now. So we'll keep that going just so that uh, the guys on the Wingman fan Wingman Finder group don't uh, potentially get confused with that. And F18 strike, F18 strike. Why don't we go ahead and call these guys Pontiac. And we'll go ahead and save once again. So I'm just gonna go through really quickly and make sure that I don't have any duplicates. So Enfield, Uzi, Pontiac. We'll zoom back out using our mouse wheel. We've got Ford, we've got Dodge, and we've got Chevy, and we've got Colt up here. Alrighty. Okay, so we've got all of our different call signs taken up, and that is fine, but I want to add one more flight um, to our mix here. I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, Emirati Mirage 2000 flight. We do have quite a few fellas on the Wing and Finder group who do like to fly Mirages, so we're going to go ahead and make sure we get a group for them. So we'll call these Emirati, um, Emirati Mirage 2000 strike. And we'll go ahead and bring them down to clients. We'll make sure their default com is 305.00 megahertz. We'll be good to go there. We'll, oh shit, we're gonna have to change that anyway. All right, so we'll bring these guys down to France because most of the um, Mirage 2000 um, call signs, or sorry, skins are already in the France nation so we just won't mess with that and we'll call them Springfield because that's our last remaining call sign that is not taken make sure we've got 305000 megahertz uh, don't want them late activated we'll go ahead and save that and we will go ahead and adjust their payload bring them down to the default Emirati sand camouflage and we will go ahead and bring them down to Cass and we'll make sure we have their Eclair uh, countermeasure pod enabled, so that way they have plenty of uh, countermeasures, because that definitely adds a lot to what they're able to carry. And Snake Eyes, we'll go ahead and go with that. They've got some Magic 2s to defend themselves with, so that ought to be perfect. And... 
go ahead and exit out here file save once again like I said always saving um, we'll go ahead and go down to parking hot and we'll make sure number two is up here at 33 so that they're facing each other like I said when they spawn in that'd be cool to be able to face each other and see them rather than having to turn your head uh, we'll go ahead and add some waypoints for these guys just the same as we did for the other jets fly on out here to the IP the target area the egress point the feet wet nav point and back on home to all mean hod airbase by point seven it is landing so there we go we can see that as once you get an idea of where you want jets to go that can go pretty pretty darn quick so why don't we go ahead and start building out our target areas that we want up here at LAR Air Base. So beyond the targets at LAR Air Base, we want to have um, some sort of IRGC slash terrorist training camps. So we'll figure out how we want to build those. Okay, when it comes to building our targets, we have to be just as knowledgeable about the systems of our different aircraft, of our different players, as we would be when we're creating the actual waypoints, um, placing aircraft on the carriers, placing them on the airfields, all that good stuff, so that we can play the different targets to the strengths of our different aircraft in order to make the best mission and experience possible for our various multiplayer clients that join us. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and zoom in on LAR airbase and we can see this gigantic cluster of our target waypoints, waypoint threes and uh, surface targets for um, our F-14s, our Mirages, our F-18s, all those good, uh, good uh, things. So we'll go ahead and add a target area at LAR airbase. We'll go ahead and add, I'm thinking maybe a target area right here, kind of in this nice valley. That'd be kind of a cool place to uh, hit something. And then maybe a target out here in this nice uh, plain area, which is, I guess it's like a bowl in between these mountains. It'd be kind of cool. Um, maybe like we have like a, a, a terrorist like camp here, um, an air base set up here, and probably like a, like a maybe a tank training kind of area out here where we've got tanks moving around and, and whatnot to hit. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So my idea in terms of having some IRGC uh, SU-25s on the ramp here at LAR Air Base is uh, that plays to the strengths of our Mirages very well. Mirages are good at coming down low going hot as snot on the deck, dropping some uh, string of Mark 82 snake eyes and getting out of there. And so that owes itself really well to dropping on a line of aircraft on the ramp. So why don't we go ahead and first start building out our static objects by going to uh, static objects. We'll go down to Iran. We'll go down to planes. We'll find the Su-25s. And now we've got our IRGC Su-25 in that very interesting and kind of cool uh, Iranian camouflage there. So we'll go ahead and zoom on in and we'll place our Su-25 and he's already in a perfect uh, orientation for being on the ramp here at uh, LAR Air Base. But if we wanted to change its orientation for any reason, say we wanted to maybe have it off to at about like a 45 degree angle, we could use our mouse button and get a roughly a good idea of what is 45 degrees off. 40 degrees and then we could type in up here on the heading 40 degrees and it would turn it si simultaneously we could also use this little wheel to turn him just like that we'll go ahead and bring him back to zero because that works just fine for this area now we'll go ahead and cr control c to copy him and we'll go control v out here control v and control v now, in reality, the IRGC operates roughly 10 uh, Su-25s, a mix of um, fleeing Iraqi Su-25s during the Gulf War, as well as a couple that have been either donated by Russia or loaned or bought from different third parties. So we'll go ahead and add a few more different Su-25s on the ramp here. Uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of space between these actual parking spots, so why not? We'll go ahead and add some more here and add some more here 
and that'll be a nice string of targets for our mirages and for giggles we'll go ahead and add some here and we'll go ahead and do 270 degrees to make him face this way and we'll control copy control V and two over here and let me go one more here at zero degrees okay cool perfect two good target areas for our uh, mirages though I'm guessing we'll have them come on down the valley just like this they'll be coming down the valley almost right down the runway uh, go streaming right over the um, the town here come in drop their bombs and then break off and come out this way okay so we'll go ahead and find our mirages in here they've got to be here somewhere ah mirage 2000 so we'll go ahead and add their IP out here and we'll add their target waypoint right on top of our line of Su 25s just to make things as simple and easy for navigation for them as possible we have them nice and lined up out here at their IP coming right down the valley right over those Su 25s they're gonna drop their bombs hopefully blow them all up and fly on out here okay we'll go ahead and add a little bit more fluff to the airfield here so why don't we add some defenses we'll go down to vehicles uh, and we'll call this group Airfield AAA. We're not going to have these guys spawn later, but uh, it'll be nice to have them labeled just for uh, f uh, later when, if you're looking at the attack view or something like that. Uh, we'll bring these guys down to air defense. Uh, insurgent closed. Why not? We'll put one of those. Oops. We'll put one of these guys right here. We don't want to have these. Um, these vehicles be moving because we want them to just be static air defenses so we'll have him facing this way I will add a second one we'll put this guy right next to the Su 25s on the ramp here oh and I forgot we're gonna change these guys to excellent so they actually shoot at something that always helps and this is going to be an insurgent on a Ural 375 we can see what that looks like there We'll add some more. We'll bring another Ural right down here by the runway. And we'll add yet another one down here on this side facing that way. And then on top of that, we'll go ahead and add some good old fashioned IGLA shoulder launched man pads. IGLA man pads. And we'll go ahead and we'll bring these guys down to high. So that way they, they will fire, but they won't fire quite as quickly. And so that way we can give our Mirage fellas down here a bit of a fighting chance when they come right on down the valley there. So we'll put one over there and we'll put a second one. We'll put him down here. So that way um, the Mirage pilots will see the missile coming up at them if they fire at, at a forward quarter. Okay, so that's some good uh, defenses there. I think that should be good. So we'll go ahead and file save. Make sure those airbase defenses are good to go. And what, what, maybe this might be too much of an elevation change for a camp. So let's see, we've got, we're looking down here, we've got an elevation change of roughly 200 feet across here. So why don't we put it at, out here at the mouth satellite up altitude satellite. Nah, that'll be good. We'll put it right here, right, right, right here. That'll be good. Okay. So for our terrorist training base, why don't we do this? We'll put some roadblocks on our road here and we'll put some tents some vehicles lined up and things like that that'll be great for iron mavericks to hit lgbs to hit all this kind of good stuff so we'll go back to statics for the static objects i don't usually name them it's usually not uh, necessary we'll go da back down to iran we'll go to structures and let's see what do they call it it's not 
roadblock. It's something else. Road outpost. That's what it is. So we'll go ahead and add this guy. We'll add a couple of these. And we'll change his orientation till it looks pretty good. That looks good. And we'll go ahead and control C, control V. Now why don't we push that guy out? Yep, we'll push that guy out a little bit. And I'll push this guy out a bit until we think this looks good. We'll get it on there. That looks pretty darn good. And we'll push it out just a little bit. That looks pretty darn good. And we'll put a third facing this way. So we'll use a little wheel to spin him around. That looks pretty darn good right there. And that way we can add some tents and whatnot in here, as well as some vehicles lined up, things like that. That should be pretty cool. Alrighty. Okay. Let's go ahead and put in some vehicles. And we'll rechange this to uh, camp. And we'll change these guys down to Iran. And yeah, we'll go ahead and put down some armor. Whoops. Some armor. We'll have them facing in a roughly that way direction. I think that should be fine. And we'll go ahead and start adding in some vehicles. Couple BTRs. Now we'll add an M113 down here. We'll add another M113. And we'll add a T55. And a T-55. This is after a very long fictional Iranian civil war, so the stocks are pretty depleted of T-72s and all the nicer tanks the Iranian ha Iranians had. So now they're scraping the bottom of the barrel and bringing back some old uh, T-72s. Alright, so those are nice and lined up there. We'll go ahead and save that, and now we'll go ahead and go back to our statics go down to Iran and we'll go down to structures I think there's a tent should have been a tent thing down here military staff man post no that is not it Nope, that's not it either. Maybe we'll go ahead and bring these to the USAF aggressors, and that way we can make sure we have everything available to us. Barp tent, that is what we wanted. Perfect. I did not see that in the Iran section, so that's why it's good to always have the USAF aggressors uh, in there so that you can get uh, what you need when you need it. So we'll add a couple tents here. Control copy, control paste. Just arrange these the way we want them to be arranged. I'm trying to make kind of a really cool picture for the uh, pod uh, picture for the Tomcats to be dropping bomb laser guided bombs uh, on these different road outposts and things, having tents near them and and stuff like that. It could be pretty cool, uh, as well as you know for our Harriers who will also be looking through these structures. Or sorry, looking through their targeting pod at these structures. Just making, to try and find and, and create a very cool uh, target area. We'll add some more tents around here. All 
Now, one unfortunate thing about these static objects is DCS does not like to spawn static objects too far away. So that's why it's very important that we add a bunch of vehicles in here to give us not only um, a bead uh, with uh, labels, at, have something shooting at us, as well as being able to find them through the targeting pod pretty easily. Unfortunately, these static objects don't like to spawn and be seen through a targeting pod or with your naked eye until you're within 10 nautical miles, which I hope, I wish there was a way to extend that distance, but uh, so far I have not found a way. Visible distance does not affect that, so that's why we're just gonna add a bunch of different vehicles around this whole area. So we'll save this and we'll add some vehicles on the road right here ready to go out and, and do their training or do their nefarious business down in the former rebel held areas. So we'll add another and yeah, we'll just do camp vehicle storage copy that's fine with me. Uh, Iran. So armor yeah we'll start off with some armor. Uh, we'll start off with a BMP. And we'll add a waypoint here, but we're going to delete that in a second. We're just adding that waypoint to get them lined up on the road here. Nice and easy. We'll add a second guy here. Uh, he's going to be a T-55. Next guy is going to be a unarmed. It's going to be a Ural 375 loaded with troops and supplies probably. It's going to go to air defense. It's going to be Euro 375 on a whoops on a truck with a, with a anti-aircraft gun. All right, they're lined up and ready to go. We'll add some more trucks around the area. Make sure we delete the spawn points so that we don't have them moving on us. 